So this young man is Abel. He is a young street evangelist who has come to preach the gospel to those attending the 2023 Austin Pride Festival. And here he is speaking to Pastor Jonine from Hope Lutheran Church. Interestingly, he is presuming to preach the gospel to an ordained Lutheran minister. And I got to admit, I, I love Pastor Jonine. <laughs> Stetson, you'd never know you were in Texas. She's absolutely marvellous. So we're going to, you know, take a little look at this, walk and talk our way through it. Here we go. Enjoy. John Neen? Yes. Okay, I'm hoping I'm, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Are you okay if I ask you some questions? Sure. So, Pastor John Neen, what are you doing out here today? I'm out here showing God's love to everyone who uh, deserves to be reminded of the fact that they are beautifully made and worthy of God's love. Uh. Now see, here we have a great distinction. We have someone who has come to preach the gospel to those who he imagines to be, as we will discover, sinful. These people are committing sins. Um, and that something about their, their life and their identity is wrong in the sight of God. And here, on the other side, we've Pastor Jonine, who is just speaking the truth that we know of the God we worship. You know, reminding people that they are beautifully made. The distinction here, I, I, it's so simply made and... Ah, all credit to her. <laughs> I, I continue to fall in love with her. She's brilliant. In my community. Your community. Oh, are you homosexual? I am. Oh, okay. Well, are you um, lesbian or I don't know the. Uh, I just use the term gay because gay. lesbian was kind of used as an abusive term for me back when. So uh, I'm still comfortable with gay. Got you. Where is your church located? We're located. Uh, uh. Pastoral Care Fail 101. Here he has entered into a discussion with someone who has come back into this discussion in good faith and from the get-go disclosed something about the context in which they're in. This is a pride parade. Are you homosexual? Of course, yeah, homosexual, whatever. Um, and Pastor Janine says that she doesn't like to be called lesbian because this was a term of abuse. This would be the moment for someone in tune with the circumstances they're in to appreciate that they are dealing with another human being who has experienced hurt. That this isn't just about scoring points from a game of Bible bingo, pointing out correct verses, but appreciating that this is a human being made in the image and likeness of God who has been bullied and victimized and who the language of LGBTQ has been turned on in the past way back when. And of course, Abel brushes this aside. He doesn't say anything bad. Um, I, but though I, I, you know, huh. And then move on to the next question. It, it's from a, a pastoral care point of view. It's a it, it's a serious fail. Located on Callahan Road, just inside of Loop 410. By the Sandia Restaurant. I'm not quite sure about that, but most people seem to. By know the where... baseball park, right? Not too, uh, far. not too far. Not too far. Oh, Callahan and 410. I'm thinking Callahan and 151. Yeah, you're you're a little bit too far south. Got you. Well, um, so so before it kicks off, both of them in their own way are quite magnetic. You know, he's a smiley guy. You know, he'd put you, you know, he'd put anyone at ease, you know. Sadly, until he starts speaking. Once he starts speaking, it gets quite confrontational and incredibly passive aggressive. But I'll, I'll let you see that for yourselves. However, Pastor <laughs> Jodine, you know absolutely you know bright and bubbly and friendly and I, I love her roman collar is the progressive flag it's i gotta get me one of them do, do you believe that that god was okay with this uh with uh the lgbtq community absolutely i think that uh, god knew exactly who god was creating when he created each one of us 
and uh, we are uniquely and wonderfully made in the image of God. What a you can't beat that. You can't beat that. You know, a paraphrase of the beginning of the creation story that we are wonderfully made. This is not accidental. It's a beautiful creation. And if we were created by a loving God on purpose, by a God who doesn't make mistakes, then yeah, you got to be okay with the gay. You got to be okay with all sorts and conditions of humanity. This seems to be lost on poor Abel. Uh, what scripture do you have to support that? All of it. Well, I tend to go back to uh, scripture in Acts that um, there is neither male, female, slave, free, Jew or Greek, but that we are all children of God, created equally in the same. What about when, G when, when God created Adam and Eve in the garden, he said, I created you male and female? That doesn't happen at all in the creation story. Chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Genesis are two different creation stories. In the first chapter, we have God create man, male and female, he created them. No mention of Adam and Eve, but man is in the singular, meaning humanity, and that humanity shares in the masculine and in the feminine. It's only then in chapter 2 that we again we have the creation of a single man, Adam, and then from him the creation of a, a woman. So really he's cutting his argument from whole cloth or possibly indicating to you know a profound misunderstanding of the, the, the biblical texts here. Well, God had to start somewhere. <laughs> genius, genius. Okay, so do you think those scriptures contradict each other? Um, I wouldn't say that they contradict each other. It's just that we no longer live in an Old Testament world. We no longer live in a Levitican society. We are in the after Jesus era. And Jesus did kind of contradict some of that old Mosaic law. Do you think Jesus contradicted the law? I think Jesus stood in direct contradiction to the Mosaic law. I see. Now, um, I know you mentioned the scripture, there's no, neither male or female. What scripture do you have to support um, specifically homosexuality? That, that, that God says, or Jesus says that it's okay for somebody to um, live in, this, in, in a world of, of, or live a lifestyle of homosexuality. What scripture do you have to support that? Abel, 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 this is an incredibly circular and repetitive and boring kind of, yeah, let's call it ministry, whatever. Um, there's lots not supported by particular scriptures. Getting to the moon would be one. Exploring the depth of the ocean would be another. You know, the creation of the... In what scriptural verse do you have for, you know, Googling something? This, it's... He uses this, you know, argument into a, a known emptiness of scripture uh, to... To obnoxious uh, ex to an obnoxious extent it's yeah, again this is something he does over and over again and i don't wish the guy any badness i know he's coming at this from a place of passion and commitment but it's it's very um it's misguided you know um a little silly i don't know that there's one specifically of course Everybody can cherry pick the Bible to meet the agenda of hate and weaponize the greatest love story ever written. Um, I think I would lean more firmly on that the greatest commandment we have is to love one another. There's there is no greater commandment to love one another as I have loved you. And this is exactly where people like Abel miss at every turn. But here we've got Pastor Jonin keeping the focus on this idea of a God of passionate love. You know, I like to keep my focus on exactly what Jesus said, you know, was the, you know, the second commandment. The first is to love God. The next is to love your neighbor, you know, to love people indiscriminately, deeply and passionately. This is the 
this is the recurring theme that we see in the ministry of Jesus. And yet we never have an instance in the gospel where gospel, uh, and, and we never have a moment in the gospel where Jesus is interrogating those he perceives to be living in sin. So who exactly this guy and people like him are emulating, you know, is it's certainly not the Jesus we know from the gospels. There's no there's no uh no others it's like only love each other if you're male and female or only love each other if you meet these requirements love one another as i have commanded you so there is no scripture to support the homosexual lifestyle is there i don't know actually there is but you know um we've got the centurion servant where the servant is a male lover of the centurion he comes to jesus and um Jesus admires the faith of the Roman centurion and says, you know, go home, you're the servant whom you love, you know, who is a male servant. And this isn't, you know, uh, you know, um, th this is romantic love. Um, Jesus is aware of that in the context and he goes home and this the servant whom he loves is healed. Um, kind of sad that Jonine didn't actually use this, but she, again, I, I'm very impressed by her, you know, unwillingness to weaponize scripture and indeed as as comes up in this conversation you know her theological education she doesn't weaponize and she doesn't weaponize any of this against him where she could you know you know she shows a true humility you know and a, a real patience uh for this this guy abel uh so you know so much to her credit she she is marvelous so why, why, if, if you don't mind me asking, um, if there isn't any scripture to support the homosexual lifestyle, and I'm sure you believe in the God of the Bible, I'm sure you believe in the Bible, um, what, what makes, what would lead you to believe that God is okay with, with the homosexual sin? Well, first of all, that again goes back to that Levitican and Mosaic law that claims that it is a sin. I don't believe that there's any degree to sin, whether some kid steals a piece of candy or whether you go out and murder somebody, sin is sin. Um, so you would I, compare homosexuality to murder or to stealing? If you're going to categorize it as a sin, there's no degree of sin. I've spoken to many people and they get a, they kind of get upset when I mention that homosexuality is a sin just like murder, but you seem to agree with, with, with me on that point. Uh, not that I agree with you. If you're going to categorize homosexuality as a sin, there is no degree to sin. He's not good with nuance. The nuance here is quite simple. That sin is sin. Nowhere, it, if, if we're going to take the, the Bible as the absolute authority in Christianity, which it isn't. But if we are going to play this game, then the Bible doesn't actually say some sins are more grave than others you know that you know stealing and lying and cheating and whichever else these these are sins that you that, you know one is not a bonus five pointer and one that you know got off for you know for time served or for good behavior early no sin is sin there, there isn't a degree of difference so if being gay is a sin which it isn't but if it were then yeah it's it's a sin if it's a sin as she says and there's no degree of sin so therefore the sin he commits and the constant sinfulness of his life because everyone sins is on a par so if he's living a good life and jonine is living a good life and we insist that part of her life is being gay therefore she's a sinner then part of abel's life as a sinner is that he is also a sinner so he is really in effect pointing at you know the the you know the the speck of dust in his neighbor's eyes whilst ignoring the plank in his own you know just to remind him of something that was said in the gospels the bible clearly states pastor joe sorry <laughs> forgot your name the bible clearly states that homosexuality is a sin I, there's there's many scriptures and I can show you if you want, but I don't believe that God is okay with with people living 
this lifestyle, just like he's not okay with people murdering and people stealing. It's not biblical. It's not biblical. Okay. What does that mean to you? Um, that means to me that you have been educated, like many people have been educated. I've been educated by the Bible. He has been educated by the Bible. Okay, no, he has not. The Bible is a book that he is not reading in the original languages. The original languages would be Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. I may be wrong here, but I'm willing to take a guess that he does not read Hebrew, Aramaic, or Koine Greek. So he is not reading the Bible. He is reading a translation of the Bible. So that's one level of, you know, problem here. The next problem is the problem of hermeneutics. He is interpreting words that were written over 2,000 years ago, in some cases. Um, and he is bringing to this his own prejudices and preconceptions, and he is interpreting and trying to give meaning to what the author said. These are things he has no access to. So for him to say that he is learning from the Bible, no, he is interpreting from a translation of ancient texts. Um, is that learning from the Bible, you know, comparable to being taught from taught by God upon Mount Herob or Sinai? No, it's not. He's being arrogant and rather foolish. Not by people. Uh, I'll take that to an extent. I'll take that to an extent. Um, I don't have a bio, I don't have a d degree in theology. <laughs> if that means anything, do you? The, I do. Yes, I do. Um, okay, here is a meaningful difference. He doesn't, by his own admission, have a degree in theology, and Pastor Jonin does. Um, there is a difference here that we. The Bible doesn't speak in and of itself. This is pure idiocy. As we said, this is an ancient text written in ancient languages, translated into modern languages and interpreted thereafter. Theology is, you know, the study of the complexity of this, or that is part of it within the, the scriptural element of theological study. She's coming to this discussion with a theological understanding. Sadly, Abel isn't, and I, I honestly think it's something he could benefit from. I firmly and hard, hardcore believe in God is love, period. You're right. God does love the world. That's John 3, 16. For he, God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Did you also know? Did you also know? If you were this way, you were this way, God said... If you believe in me, you will have eternal life. He didn't say if. If what? If you're there, a certain there's way. No there's no, no, he said, if you. Did you know that, that God caused, did you know that, God's, that God caused people to repentance? Even Jesus himself and his disciples preached repentance. What does repentance mean to you? Um, as it should to anybody. That no, what does it mean to you? Forgiveness for your sin. What is, okay, again, we're back to the sin. Is homosexuality a sin? I yes or no? I believe that homosexuality is a sin. What scripture do you have to support that? And round and round the circle we go. He has not come to this discussion in good faith. He's come really making a, a hard effort to impose his assumptions on those he's interviewing. He's not having an honest discourse. And this is why... In, in, in an environment like this, at a Pride event, like a festival here in Austin, why so many people will reject Christianity? Why so many people will reject people like him? Because they come as wolves in sheep's clothing. Baseball cap, camera, you know, microphones, sunglasses, and big smile. You know, a lot of charisma. And they wish to get people talking and but it's not about talking it's not about discussion it's not a fair exchange of ideas where one side is open to the other this is this is bullying by speaking at and really it's unkind it's it's absent of love
he doesn't realise this. I think he has a lot of growing up to do. And again, credit to Jonine for, you know, for putting up with this for so long. I think I would have run out of patience with this long before now. Um, if you want to keep going in the circle, we can keep going in the circle. But I'm going to no, go back gonna... to the fact that God created us in God's image. You're right. Now, God... Yeah, interesting. Yeah, this is a safe place. Um, this is public property. I paid to come in here. I'm not hating people. I'm not yelling at people. I'm not judging people. I'm just simply asking people if they want to have a conversation. Yes, he is judging people and he is showing hate. He has come in with some preconceived notions that he wishes to impose on those he speaks to. And by pretending to be there to have an open discussion, a fair and two-sided discussion, when that's not actually what's going on. Really what he's engaging in is a kind of passive aggression. And as we've learned from the pastor here, is that she has a past of abuse. He's speaking to people who have experienced abuse because of their identities and their sexualities. People who are fragile and they come to events like Pride to be with among friends, people who can understand them. And I think the mission and the presence, the aroma of Christ that Pastor Janine brings to this situation is, is wonderful, is a true witness to God in a community. Um, for Abel to be acting like this is, it's disgraceful. If they want to have a conversation, then why not? I, I, I thought I would come to you specifically because you're a church, mm -hmm. right? And there's always, there always seems to be a big conflict and a big divide between, between church or Christians and the LGBT community. So I find it hard to believe that you can be a Christian or, 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 or let me see, that you can be a pastor and be in agreement with, with this sin. Uh, again, I, I don't believe homosexuality is a sin. Well, and it's I biblical that to, it is. I'm going to continue to preach love and acceptance which i is preach what, love too which is what i have been asked god to. god calls us to repentance we are called to turn away from our sins in the book of first corinthians it says that the evil doer the homosexual the idolater the murderer will not enter the kingdom of god paul continue goes paul continues to continues to go on and say some of you were these things some of you were idolaters homosexuals murderers some of you were these things, but now we have salvation and grace in the name of Jesus, okay? So again, there's that word, were, okay? The Bible says that clearly the homosexual will not make it into the kingdom of God. What does that mean to you, that scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 6? There are a lot of people who are in agreements with me, a lot of people who are sitting around us who what? serve the same God and worship in the same congregation that I do. Um, again, I'm sorry, I just... I. Neither one of us are going to be able to agree. I can respect that you have your opinion. It's um, not my opinion, it's biblical. Again. It's not my opinion. The Bible is... The arrogance. This isn't my opinion, it's what the Bible says. The Bible says a lot. Again, this comes down to hermeneutics, to interpretation. You know, the Bible, like lots of ancient texts, is one of these documents we can find a justification for almost anything from. Um, again, probably informs some of the abuse that Pastor Jonine experienced and people like her experienced in their pasts, in her past. Um, the Bible has consistently been used in the past to bully, intimidate, harass and wound people. Not that the Bible does that, but it's weaponized by, sadly, people like Abel here, and that's what he's done after um, she has disclosed to him that she has, you know, she has suffered for her identity. Um, but the arrogance to, you know, to, you know, it's it's not my opinion. It is the Bible. Um, I th you know, a pastoral or theological answer to that is that is a load of garbage. But, you know, carry on. You do, you able.
It's open to interpretation. You mentioned cherry picking. It seems it kind of seems like you're cherry picking. No, the Bible is not inerrant. Just the because Bible God loves is. the world doesn't mean he's completely in agreement or accepts the sin of the world. He came to die on a cross for the sins of the world that people would repent and turn away from their sins. I appreciate your time. You don't want to continue the conversation? Of course she doesn't. No, that conversation should have ended a long time ago. She has her her poise, her <laughs> her smile even now. Uh you know, she I mean, she's like, she's, you know, head and shoulders taller than him. She's got that whole cowboy look, uh, you know. Had she been in Dublin where I am, um, you know, that conversation may have ended differently, but I know I, I, I joke. But, you know, she's done a marvellous job, but that conversation, the conversation is over. No, this really, is good. I'm really, really done. But thank you for people on both ends can hear what you have to say and people can hear what I have to say. I, I think I would rather people hear what I have to say in a setting of love and not in a... I'm preaching love too. I love these people. They, they Pastor can hear this type jo of stuff Johansson. from Austin, from the capital. And I just, that's that's not my setting. I would I'll ah, look. Uh, how many times did he get her name wrong? At least twice that I counted. He, he failed to uh, even acknowledge... You know her disclosure of past hurt in the, the you know in the discussion if this is his understanding of speaking the word of god um yeah that's a god i could do without his his idea of god and his idea of salvation i think is one that is rejected by people and i think is one that's rightly um, rejected by people. I could understand that myself as a, you know, a devout and worshipping Christian, as a theologically educated Christian, um, I, I could quite happily say that whatever he imagines to be God um, is the kind of God and the kind of gospel I really don't want in my life. I don't want it hurting me and I don't want it hurting those around me. Thank goodness for uh, this Lutheran pastor who is making herself present as a gay person at a pride event in a country where there are, you know, violent uh, hate crimes which involve firearms. This is a victim community. This, this, is, this is bravery. What she is doing is really brave it's courageous i think she needs to be commended she gets a five stars from me i mean high five uh all the way and she's there making the church and jesus present in a community that is wounded and i think with all the well-meaning and all the passion in the world people like abel you know who's doing something of course on youtube uh which is highly performative. We see his, you know, furtive looks back to the camera to make sure he's in frame and being seen. This is, a, this is about performance. Of course it is. Where the ministry of presence that Pastor Jonine exhibits here, her massive smile, her courage, that, that Stetson had, that, you know, the, the, the Texan in her, if indeed she is Texan, or if she's not, she's adopted it very well. But this is the image of Christianity I would like to see in any environment I'm in. Uh, or any environment where there are people who could do with a positive image of the love of God. Um, I don't know if she'll ever see this video, but if you do, you know, thumbs up, Pastor Jonine. That was first class. Um, I suppose that's all we can really say. That was... It would be wrong to be mean about Abel, but I think he could do with a great deal of growing up. Um, uh, I, yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching.